Well, uh, to be perfectly honest, it's about politics. You know, I was here uh, uh, about a month, five weeks ago, campaigning for a couple of candidates and meeting with some people. And uh, I do think we need a change in direction of the country. And New Hampshire, obviously, are the first has the first primary. And uh, meeting with people, talking to people, letting them know my ideas and my thoughts, and seeing uh, how things developed. Well, a bunch of things. We went to Lindy's and uh, met with some people and toured a factory and had meet, having some other meetings. and. Uh, you know, one of the great things about New Hampshire uh, is that it's not just a media state where you have to have $30 million of TV ads. It's a retail state. And you go around the state to communities like Keene, meet people, say hello, get to meet them, get to listen to what they're thinking. And I think it helps you both understand what people in the state are feeling and thinking and help them understand. It's possible. Your yes. And it's, uh, you know, this is not the first time I've thought about it. I was governor of New York for 12 years. And I came here in 08 thought about it. I came here in 12, thought about it. And I was kidding when I spoke at uh, Politics and Eggs about five weeks ago that every four years you have the World Cup, the Olympics, and Pataki showing up in New Hampshire. Uh, and that happens to be true. So I don't really want to talk about it because I have in the past. But I'm either going to make up my mind that I will or I won't. And uh, listening to people, hearing their viewpoints, letting them know what I'm thinking, and it will help make uh, the right decision. Yeah, I think the, the federal government is too big, too powerful, too expensive, too intriguing intrusive uh, and too domineering in people's lives and I think we've just seen an explosion of federal domination of people's lives on everything from health care to uh, so many other personal decisions that I think should be left to people, uh, left to the political processes closer to the people like go local government or the state government. So I think we have to dramatically reduce the size of the federal government. We have to refocus on its core mission which is to provide for the security and safety of the people of America and create an economic climate where small businesses want to create the jobs and the opportunities that graduates from Keene and elsewhere are going to want to have to begin building their career uh, and then uh, have an effective safety net. And when you look at the people most deserving of our support as a nation, it's the veterans who put their lives on the line. And yet we can't even get decent health care to our veterans when they need it. And not only can we not get them decent health care, this administration lies about it, covers up the failings as opposed to saying we're going to fix that problem. So, so I think we need a dramatic change in Washington. I think we need to bring power back to the people and take it from the politicians in Washington. And uh, I think there's a, a fairly broad consensus among the American people that government has become. And I think powerful. it's, uh, uh, first of all, is information. You should know uh, the likelihood of the type of employment you could get after you graduate. You should know the costs, not just of tuition and room and board, but the estimated costs of the entire period of time. And I'll tell you one thing I did in New York State is we looked at where we had shortages and needed graduates uh, in STEM particularly in science, technology, uh, engineering, math, and we added foreign language to that and said, you major in these uh, uh, areas, you, you graduate in these areas and commit to working in those areas for three years, and we will forgive up to uh, a certain level of your college debt. Uh, and I think programs like that make sense, uh, certainly at the state level. I think, uh, um, I think it's, a, it's just wrong that when you graduate from college, you, you put the effort in, you make the commitment to build a better life. You're not only saddled with too much student debt, and I remember paying mine off for a long time uh, after I graduated, but you're also now saddled the next generation with right now almost $18 trillion of debt that you didn't get anything for. And that's wrong. The, the whole concept of America, in my view, the basic core tenet of it was that one generation builds so that the next generation has greater opportunity. You know, my parents' generation during World War II sacrificed so their kids could have unlimited opportunities. And now we see for the first time uh, the government and uh, taking from future generations to uh, live beyond its means today. It's wrong, it's got to change, and I think but it I can think change. That is the essential difference between the approach that I brought to government and would bring to government and what is happening in Washington. I believe in people. We're a democracy because we have faith in an individual's ability to make the right choices for themselves, for their future, for their families, and political choices for the future of the country. The other side believes that they have to provide and take care. And I'll tell you, I would much rather have a dozen people randomly selected from New Hampshire making decisions for me than the, a dozen people from the current administration in Washington or the so-called experts from the Harvards of the world. You know, common sense matters. 
and it matters in our lives, and it matters in government, and too often it's lacking in government. I'll just give you one of the things that I would like to do, and one of the reasons I'm so interested about the possibility of running is because I have led a major government. I read the, led the state of New York for 12 years, and one of the things I believe we have to do in Washington is reduce the size of the federal government's workforce. I would reduce it by 15 percent. And there are those who are going to say, well, you can't do that. Look at the disruption it will cause. When I was governor of New York, we reduced the size of the state government by over 15 percent. And it worked better. We didn't cause disruption. In fact, we had a more efficient government that operated more effectively for the people that we were supposed to That's serve. That's what America should be about. Opportunity, optimism, belief in tomorrow. Our kids are going to have better lives than we do. Because when we stand together and dream and work hard to achieve that dream, we can do anything. The government has stood in the way, I believe, too often. Because I've been up to the Canadian oil sands, I've visited with companies, I've visited with the government officials, and that oil is going to go on to the marketplace. If they don't build the Keystone Pipeline so we can access Canadian oil instead of Venezuelan oil, it's going to go to China, it's going to go to Japan, they're going to build a pipeline to the Pacific Coast. So it's not going to prevent any environmental concerns that may exist about accessing this oil, but it is going to help us get oil out of trucks, out of railroads transported in a more environmentally sound way and help unite North America as an energy entity. And I think instead of depending on oil from the Middle East or from uh, Venezuela, having U.S., Canada, and Mexico working together in energy is one of the exciting opportunities we see to, to grow the economy and create hundreds of thousands of tremendous jobs for the Americans of the 21st century. I think it's important that Americans and particularly our politicians and elected officials respect the rule of law. Um, this country is a country where our freedom, our, our, all of our protections come from respecting the rule of law. And I think we are seeing a government that just too often has fla flaunted the rule of law, uh, that has usurped executive authority, that hasn't paid enough attention to the basic constitutional protections that the American people have. I think uh, many of Obama's executive off orders have gone way too far. I mean, I believe that uh, the elected representatives of the people, the House, the Senate, the executive, uh, have to work together, and if they can't reach a compromise, then you keep trying. But you don't just say, you know, I'm going to do it through my imperial power. Uh, part of leadership is convincing people to work together and, when necessary, compromising to achieve common goals. I had a state legislature that didn't agree with me on many of the major initiatives I advanced. I didn't go do it unilaterally by proclaiming the power. We sat down, we negotiated, we, we fought, and ultimately we were able to reach the common ground that allowed us to move forward. So striking that common ground, however difficult it is, however long it takes, however many all-night meetings, is the way a democracy should achieve change, not by imperial power.